Hello guys, my name is Artheo Bear. Welcome to my official Shrine Breaker Guide. Artheo ends the game. Keep, keep fucking... Stalling their backs. Stall the backs. Stop the ports! Stop the ports! Stop the ports! Stop the ports! Arthia! What is the Shrine Breaker? The Shrine Breaker name was created by one of Bolly Bear's quotes. Your shrines will fall! with his ability to disable and deal damage to towers. The towers are called shrines. In Volibear's story, he made a vow to tear down civilization, which was the Aram Bridge, where the Watchers are frozen in time. His destruction unleashed the terrible power that corrupted him into the Thousand Pierce Bear. Basically, the Void Hybrid Bear, so I created a playstyle based on his story using the classic skin and the Thousand Pierce Bear skin. The classic uses the Shrine Breaker playstyle called the Stormbreaker using Iceborn Gauntlet, and the Thousand Pierce is called the Rift Breaker using the Rift Maker. You guys can find my guide on Mobile Fire. If you go on to the Champion Volley Bear, I'm on the top of the list here. Shine Breaker Volley Bear, click on that. Scroll down and you can see that I have many different Shine Breaker play styles to uh, choose from. Using different mythic options and different strategies. As well as different uh, kinds of runes that you can choose from. Summoner spells. But today, for this guide, I want to focus on just the Stormbreaker and the Riftbreaker. So you guys can, you know, check out my guide and try out all these different playstyles. But for, for this guide, I want to show you the basics of how to play my playstyle using these two playstyles. With the Iceborne Gauntlet and the Riftmaker. Alright, let's talk about the runes. So we have the basic setup here. We got the Resolve Tree and the Precision Tree. We got PTA, Lethal Tempo, Conqueror. These are all great options on Volley Bear. PTA, for me, is great if you're on defense because what PTA does is when you proc it with your Q and W, which you can do very quickly, by the way, um, once you proc this, you deal extra damage from all sources. So that means the minions are dealing more damage, your tower is dealing more damage. So I like to pick this uh, versus matchups that I know are, are difficult or like if the uh, combination of the, the enemy top laner and the jungler have like uh, CC abilities that uh, they can easily dive Volley Bear on the tower, um, having PTA to quickly, you know, proc this off and get that extra damage from the tower and the minions is actually very good. So I like to use that in that uh, situation. Uh, Lethal Tempo, um, what this does is when you land your Q and E CC abilities, you're you're going to be able to land um, your on hit damage. So I like to use this as like an all in kind of play style. So like against Darius, uh, for example, he's an all in type champion. So being able to run him down uh, all in with all this uh, attack speed and extra range you get off your W, plus even more range when you ult with Stormbringer. So that, that's uh, mostly for those type matchups for the all-in type champions. I like to run that. So Conqueror is one of my favorites because it scales damage on his ult. So when you're attacking the target up to the tower, you're stacking damage on the ult. And that damage is going to deal extra damage to the tower. And it scales well with items like Titanic, which also increases the ult damage. Alright, so I want to jump into the Resolve Tree. We're going to focus on the Stormbreaker playstyle. Um, but I want to go over the basics here. The basics of the Resolve Tree 
should always be Graps, Demolish, Second Win, Overgrowth. So Graps is really good on Volley Bear because of his W. His W, in comparison to the old Volley Bear, has a shorter cooldown. The old Volley Bear had a higher cooldown. So with the new bear, we're able to proc this every uh, 5 to 4 seconds, almost the same time as his W, every time. So you're getting health every time you proc this. And uh, double damage, double heal, basically. And then demolish benefits from all the health that you, you buy from the items, as well as from graps. And uh, over the course of a game, this is going to become extremely strong. By the time you reach the Nexus Shrines, you're going to be able to end the game quickly with the amount of damage that you apply on this. And second win, it's very important on Volley Bear because during the time of your, your Graps timer and your W, in between that, you're regenerating. Volley Bear is kind of an up-close combat type champion where he's going to be taking damage before he reaches his target. So it's important that he sustains his health uh, in between the marks of his W. So the first mark, and then you got a four to five second uh, time where you're regenerating from second win, and then you W again, you get the, the double heal to double damage, and then you're regenerating again. So you're constantly healing yourself. I find that very important against like range matchups in the top lane. Um, and a lot of the, the matchups have abilities that can reach you from a long range. This is why I think second win is very important on Volley Bear. And it scales well with health. Uh, Overgrowth is probably the most important rune for the Shinebreaker playstyle because it scales with uh, Demolish and items that have health scalings. So that's very important to have. And basically, what you want to do is uh, farm the waves in the side lanes, and during the downtime, you want to like farm monster camps. So you're going to constantly scale health. And the reason why I take this is because towards the late game, not only it makes demolish stronger, but it basically gives you another item worth of health in terms of damage. All right, another thing I want to talk about um, is the rune stats here. This is pretty much standard. You want to take attack speed, adaptive, and health. So the attack speed is going to give that uh, level 1 Dorn's Ring um, on your passive about 16% attack speed. So that's a big deal. And then adaptive damage um, is also going to increase that uh, passive damage, that lightning chain, as well as your E at level 1. That's what you're going to start with. You're going to have the, a huge amount of burst damage and wave clear. So that way you take less damage from their wave and constantly pressure them in. And health, same thing as, as overgrowth. The, all that extra health, 140 health added on to, let's say, maybe 300 on average per game. You know, that bumps it up to over 400 health. That's like another item worth. It's, it's a quite a big deal when it comes to scaling with demolish and items like Titanic to break those towers. All right, so let's get into the Stormbreaker. Uh, the Sorcerer Rooms is, is what we're running here. Um, for this patch, I'm running this rune here, which is, increases uh, Volley Bear's movement speed. Um, every time he he runs with Q, Thundering Smash, up to a target, he's, he's getting bonus movement speed. And any other bonuses, like the movement speed added onto the Hole Breaker this patch, um, is going to increase his ability to run down the lane with the uh, boost of swiftness as well. Um, and if you're running some of their spells like Ghost, that's going to increase that. And it, what that does, it's going to allow you to run down a lane uh, quickly so that you can put pressure on the on the lane. And um, be able to get away from, uh, you know, bad fights and, you know, all that stuff. And Gathering Storm is probably the most crucial part of this. Uh, with all of this health scalings, Gathering Storm is going to scale your damage over the course of a game. So while you're getting health, you're also scaling damage. So you become a late game monster with this, this rune setup. So that's the Stormbreaker playstyle rune setup here. The Riftbreaker playstyle, same setup. The only difference is we're running Absolute Focus. We're getting more adaptive damage. And what we're doing here is we're abusing this extra power 
as long as you're able to keep your health above 70%. And you can do that with the Rift Maker uh, Mythic, which has Omnivamp, uh, which heals off the wave. So your Lightning Chain uh, heals you and allows you to stay above that so you can abuse that actual power. So your early game trades are going to be really powerful with the Dorn's Ring, scaling per level. Um, so when you make your first trade, you're going to burst down that target. It's going to make it easier for you to execute them the second uh, trade or third. Um, and then once you get the BAMP, you're going to be extremely powerful. And by 10 minutes on, Gathering Storm is going to make you even more powerful. All right, now we're going to talk about the Shrine Breaker items. The first thing that is very important when it comes to the Volley Bear is the first item. The first item options that we have here is Titanic or Nashers. These are the two items that you want to rush. Now, depending on how much gold you're making determines your first item. That's the first rule of the Shrine Breaker playstyle. Is whenever you make 1,200 gold for Tiamat on the first back, you're going to be rushing Titanic, no matter what. And if you don't have that amount of gold, you're going to be going with Nashers because it's very cheap. And right off the bat, you want to buy the Recurve Bow. Because the more attack speed you have, the faster you're going to clear the wave. And eventually, the more AP you have, the more you're going to clear it with your E. And um, these two items are very important on Volley Bear because it helps with wave clear. So by level 6, you want to be able to go behind the tower and proxy and take the wave and also get some gold off the, the tower using Demolish. And if the target fights you, you have your ult to disable it and deal more damage and get closer to even more plates and continue to get the second wave. So these two are very important. And for one reason only, if you go Titanic, it means more damage being done to the towers, as well as uh, your wave clear, your Q and W deal the most damage on top of your autos, and then your ult. When you increase your health, you deal more damage with Titanic. And during those 12 seconds of your ult, everything hurts. Your basic attacks, your Q and your W. And then um, Nashers, basically your passive is basically a Nashers too. It scales off AP, and it gives you uh, attack speed. And that's pretty much what Nash's Tooth is. It has a ton of attack speed, and it scales with AP. So this is going to allow you to shred those towers down quickly. And, and, you know, like I said, both of these items are very crucial when it comes to shredding towers and clearing waves. And the second most important thing, the reason why we want these two either or as a first item is because of these. So we got the Iron Pot and the Sorcery Pot. Now when you go in Titanic Rush, you want to drink this. That's going to stack more health when you ult. And it's going to mean, that means more damage for Demolish and Titanic. And then Nashers, you want to drink the Sorcery Pot, which is going to mean more AP on the passive, more attack speed. And not only this, this deals true damage to the target, and also to the towers. So that's why these are very important. At level 9, at level 8, you should have your first item. And then level 9, you want to drink these guys. Okay? And then, we want to work on the mythic items. It's going to be Iceborne or Riftmaker, depending on which uh, playstyle you choose. The Stormbreaker or the Riftbreaker. And then the third item, you're going to go straight into Hallbreaker, because by that time, you should be ready for Baron. And the Baron buff, on top of the Hole Breaker buff, it's like applying a double buff on top of the, the Canyons or the Jack Supers. That's going to allow you to push up to the lane and uh, put a ton of damage and pressure uh, while everybody's focused on the Dragon. And uh, other Mythic options are all here. All of these are in my guide. So you can go to Mobile Fire and uh, take a look at those guys. If, you, if you're interested in playing any other Mythic other than Iceborne and Riftmaker, you can go there and check it out and, and play around with that. So that's uh, pretty much it for the Shrine Breaker items. This is pretty much the core items that you should be focusing on. 
you rush your first uh, wave clear items depending on the gold. And then engine mythic. Don't forget your level 9 uh, pots, one of the two, you want to drink those. And then third item, hall breaker, you're all set to go and go break the game. Now there's going to be situational matchups to where you can't build Titanic and Nashers as a first item. And that usually is, is if you die or get ganked and died, um, that's where you have to change the plan here. You have to go defense entirely. So you want to go mythic items. If, if you fall behind, you always want to rush your mythic. So depending on the matchup, you have to choose uh, whatever play style you're running, Iceborne or Riftmaker. Um, it's the safest route, and you can get back, get yourself back into the game once you get your Mythic. Um, but the one thing I want to point out, um, Iceborne is really good at crowd control on Volleybear, and it's really good against AD, um, especially auto attackers. You can kind of slow them down, kite them around, and have more control. And uh, this has damage reduction, so that's how what you want to look for. Um, if you fall off and you can't get your, your first item, because these are basically snowball items. You always want to try to, you know, strive for getting these as first items. If you can't, that's okay. You can go with your Mythic. And then Riftmaker is really good against uh, Poke and um, Tanks. So it deals two damage to the tanks to shreds them down, and it gives you that vamp off the wave where you can heal yourself and, and keep that sustain in combination with your grabs and the second win. Um, and you're able to uh, wave clear. And that's another thing I want to talk about with Riftmaker. If you still want that wave clear, Riftmaker is the best mythic for a top lane on Volibear. It's like the alternative safe option. If you are kind of behind and you're against Poke, a difficult matchup, Riftmaker is really good. And it's going to allow you to proxy behind Tower as well because of the vamp. And all that burst damage you can deal to a target when you all in is the difference compared to Russian Iceborne. Iceborne is, is pretty terrible at proxying behind Tower. This is more like you have to sit at your own Tower and um, try to get this item as soon as you can. Because once you get this item, they're never going to be able to escape from you. From that point on, you have control of the game. But Riftmaker is going to allow you to get that early gold and get those plates and, and still proxy like you can with the Titanic. And Nashers, the only difference is you got way more sustain compared to Titanic and Nashers. So... Um, I always recommend this versus matchups like Gragas, um, who has a lot of poke, he has a lot of kite, but you can pretty much ignore him, max your E, and use your passive on the wave, and just heal off of it, sustain yourself, and get, get the gold that you need. So Riftmaker is always a really good alternative if you're struggling with the Titanic or Nash's Rush. All right, so now we're in the practice tool. I'm here to talk about the lane phase, uh, what to do in the early game, mid game, and a late game. So in the early game here in the lane phase, we want to start with the Dorn's Ring. Most of the time we want the Dorn's, the Dorn's Ring. There's a few of my play styles uh, that might say otherwise, but you can check that out in my guide. But most of the time is always going to be the Dorn's Ring. And the reason why is because his passive gets an extra 1% attack speed. It's kind of a big deal when you got attack speed and your rune stats. You got 10% there, so that's 16%. Um, it's very important to bully um, the enemy uh, using the wave, your lightning chain. And uh, we want to start with E-Sky Splitter. Okay? So the important thing here is using... The lightning bolt crashing down on the wave to push your target back as well as use the lightning chain to kill the wave off and make your wave bigger than the enemy so that you can win trades so this is the basic combo and what you want to do is you want to hit these three minions one two three 
until they get low, and then drop your E and kill all three, and then you you, you try to last it hit all the rest of the minions here. There should be uh, six. I I missed two there, so it should be six, and then the rest is twelve. Uh, you should have twelve total before you hit the tower. Is basically what you want to do. And what you want to do uh, second is W. The reason why you want W, because you're not looking to kill your target right away. You're actually looking to pressure him and drain him of his resources, which is his health and his mana, using your wave and your WE sustain to take no damage from the wave uh, and from the target. Then after that, once you get Q at level 3, that's where you're going to look to all in. But um, after you shove in that wave at level 2, you, you just want to walk over here and ward this bush. And then go back over here and push that wave that I already did and get to level 3. Um, and then you just keep, you keep pressuring because you know the jungle is going to come and gank any time now. But you'll be able to see him from two... There's only two ways that he can gank you. It's right here. Um, this is going to be available pretty soon. The scuttle. So basically what you want to do is just uh, pressure until that happens and you want to ping your jungler to take this down. Because that's, this is very important. You drop your ward here. You need vision here. Because the last thing you want a jungler to do is cross over here and gank you this way. So you help your jungler. If, if your jungler doesn't get this, just take this. Because um, you already got the, the power to clear the wave and pressure your, your enemy on your tower here. So you got all this time for him to push your push the wave back to your tower. And and then um, we want to put two points in E because we got the Dorn's Ring right now, so we're scaling with AP. Push that. And then, uh, you know, what you want to do here is go in this bush. And this this right here is going to tell the enemy's jungler that you're not in lane. So he's more likely to go gank mid or go bot. And then another thing is, is when uh, they're farming under tower, you want to do this. You see that range? So you know about right here, you're going to cast your E. They can't see the animation. So you'll be able to damage your target down a couple times by sitting in this bush. Um, and as the wave gets closer, you can kind of punish him if he walks past, for example. Uh, if he gets too close, like right here, you can punish him with this combo right here. You try to land that combo and back off. And that's pretty much all you got to do every time. You push the wave in every single time and you go to that bush. But right now, and we're going to do this until we reach uh, level 6. But at level 5, generally, most of the time, I would go back and I would buy my item most of the time. But if you don't in the early, let's say you died, you got ganked or whatever, and then you might want to consider going Nasher's Tooth. Well, if you die, I, I probably wouldn't go Nasher's Tooth. I would probably go defense and go straight into Mythic first. But um, let's just say you get ganked and you, you survived, whatever. You have very little gold. I, I would start with Nashers. It's very, you know, cost efficient. Recurve is cheap now. Uh, I recommend going this first. Otherwise, if you go back on 1,200 gold, I recommend going Tiamat early, Titanic Rush. Okay? And then you go back to lane. We get to level 6. We're ready to dive. So we're maxing W at this point. When you go Tiamat, you max W. After a level 2 uh, uh, E. If you're going uh, Nashers, you want to max uh, your E. And then no matter what, uh, you know, whether you're maxing W or E, you always want to max Q second. Movement speed, 
making these two combos is very important. Alright, so we're we'll talk about uh, proxying. When you shove your wave in, you can go past here with Tiamat or Nashers if you got a lot of attack speed and AP. Uh, your wave clear with the E, your passive, does a lot of a lot of damage to the wave. You can clear it really fast when you're going Nashers Rush. And then uh, Titanic Rush, you're clearing it with this item alone. You can see the shockwave damage here. That in combination with your passive, you should be able to delete the wave very quickly before you take any damage. And then when this gets low, you can use the Demolish. You have your ult. If the target's fighting you, just ult the tower and you can back off. And as long as you get into your place and your wave, you're good. And that's all you pretty much have to do. And another thing I want to explain is when you kill the target, if you kill the target under tower, okay, and you're fairly healthy, you got your ult, you still got your ult kind of thing. If you kill the tiger without your ult is what I mean. And let's say he walks back to lane, okay? Let's say he's here. You can punish him. You can stay right here. If he tries to fight you, it doesn't matter because all this damage that you're applying to a wave with your passive, it's, it's just going to delete it. You can use Ignite as well. And what he's going to try to do is he's going to try to run to his tower. He's not going to be able to do anything because you have Ghost. And you could disable it and finish him off. So he can do that. He's either going to run that way or he's, he's going to run this way. Okay. And it doesn't really matter. Because you can just dive the tower. You know. And kill him. And when you kill him like that. Uh, so like you killed him. You already killed him the first time. And then when he comes back and you kill him again, what that means is you're going to pick up another wave or two. And you're going to be ahead and, and levels as well. So that's pretty much what you want to do once, once you're level 6 and you get your item. So whether you got Tiamat or Recurve Bow with AP, um, you're, you're going to be able to clear the wave very fast before he's able to um, do anything about it. Uh, let's talk about Vision. You want to drop this here so you can see the camps here. That means the jungler is going to be here for this. Okay. And another thing to pay attention to is Dragon. So if Dragon's up, um, you generally want your jungler to to uh, take care of that at this point. At level 6, level 7, he should be able to do it. Um, if the jungler is wasting time up here, your, your teammate jungler can actually do the Dragon. If you die here... After killing a wave and getting, you know, enough plates or whatever. Um, and it, let's say you take somebody down with you. That's that's way more worth than, you know, dying here. It doesn't matter if you die here at all. So, like, your teammate's going to pick up this dragon. You made his job easier and you're rich as fuck. Um, the jungler's just wasted half his time up here. It's pretty much what you want to repeat doing. Because once... Let's say I killed him twice, right? And I'm rich enough to get uh, Titanic eventually. Alright, so we have Titanic. So our wave clear is very strong. And our tower damage. Demolish damage is pretty big. So once you complete this tower, this uh, first tower here, you want to pick up the rip if it's available. So the general rule when it comes to uh, the rip is if you get it before 14 minutes of a game. You can actually uh, crash it on another tower that has plates and get more money. That's the general rule. If it's past 14 minutes of a game, you just want to use it on your your own lane and put more pressure on the lane. So what we're going to do is we still got plates and it's going to fall soon, so i got to hurry up.
So we're going to try to pick up these plates here. And I always recommend to crash at mid. And the reason why mid is because mid is the short lane. If you can open up the mid lane, it's going to make your job easier to uh, end the game at the Nexus Towers. So you try to take as many towers as you can. Um, you can take out... There's usually, usually two. Um, or get this halfway. Especially after the first tower. Um, getting all those plates. Because otherwise, if I would have used it here, I would have been able to take this out, and this out, and maybe this while they're all busy on the dragon. That's the key. You want to use the rift while they're busy on the dragon. So like right here in the mid lane, you want to do the same thing. Or just get the place. Actually, just get the place. It's more important. Just get that more gold. It doesn't really matter if dragon or not. Um, you can dive mid lane with your teammates. But for top lane, um, while they're focused on the dragon, you definitely want to cash it then. And take out those two towers. It's going to give you a lot more gold. Alright, so level 9, past level 9, uh, after Titanic, we want to get this right here, the Iron Pot. That's going to give you so much damage on uh, Titanic, and also during the time as your ult, as your ult increases health, it's going to give you more damage overall. So we're going to do this, and your demolish damage is going to be bigger, and not only that, you increase your size when you pop that, gain health. So now we're, um, my general rule when it comes to split pushing, if you still have a healthy tower, there's no reason to leave. You stay here the rest of the game. The only rule is, is if you cannot make it to your lane before dragon spawns, you want to go mid lane and short lane and just break these towers. So like, for example, if dragon's going to spawn in 10 seconds, you want to go mid and put pressure. If... The dragon is spawning in 50 seconds. You should be able to go back top and put more pressure up here. And the reason why I say this, because they're so far away from the from top lane, that they would have to force to send somebody back to go all the way up there. Um, and it, it just makes your teammates' lives easier when they're fighting. And also, if they if they don't go back and defend, you can just punish them for it and just take this tower. And you can do it very quickly with Titanic. That's pretty much what you want to do during the time of the, the dragon. Otherwise, what you should be doing during the downtime, uh, you should be taking monster camps, and you, all you want to do is sit here and wave clear. You could also go down to mid, uh, mid lane here and clear the wave, but never, never overextend. The only time that you can you can overextend is in here. You can set up vision, uh, and because because the more uh, monster camps or minion waves that you clear, the more health that you're gonna you're gonna have. So we just set up vision during the downtime. So um, at, at this point, you want to focus on mythic. So with this playstyle, I'm running the Stormbreaker uh, rune, so I'm going Iceborne. So we go generally uh, mythic. Um, now I want to talk about a situational. Let's just say our tower is not standing anymore. Like it's, the tower is no longer there. Okay. And let's say dragon's down. Okay. We, we slay the dragon. Your team or you do it, whatever. I don't care. If the dragon's slayed. And this, by the way, if, if you finish um, top, and let's say the top laner is not there pushing, you can go ahead and help your team take the dragon. As long as you go back to top lane with a healthy tower and, and keep keep pushing. Um, and, and getting, because this right here is free gold. Free gold for you. And the reason why I say stay top is because you have a tower to run back to and fall back on. Okay, it's such a short distance for Volley Bear just to ghost and run back to. Opposed to if that was gone, it's a long way back to that second tower. If you know what I mean? So that's why at that point when the first tower is gone, we want to rotate. So uh, like this, in this situation, when Dragon's down and your tower is down, we want to rotate to the bot lane when um, 
the Baron is up. So obviously right now the Baron is not up, but it will be in a minute. Um, uh, the second rip is another reason why we want to stay top. So remember that rule. Uh, when the rifts are still available, you never have to leave top. So even after the first tower, um, what you want to do is just farm here and never overextend the river. You just want to go over to mid lane and farm and then go back. But never overextend the river without this tower. Um, so anyway, we got the second rift. So now that's over. So if this is down, uh, you're okay now. So let's just say our top lane tower is down, right? You got Baron spawning. We want to go bot lane. But first of all, we got Mythic. Um, and at this point, we're going Hullbreaker. So that's pretty much what we're doing. And I always tell people, if you got enough gold for this, drink, take it. So that's that's worth way more. So basically, you want to go bot lane. And sometimes uh, bot lane still has their first tower standing. Um, so you can take that, get some extra gold. And you can tell your team that they can they can challenge the Baron. So uh, what you want to do when you use the rift, you always want to tank the tower damage. So you basically want to wait for the rift to charge. You want to keep it alive as much as you can. And then allow it to crash into the Nexus Towers. But we're not going to do that. The reason why, because I need to show you the Shrine Breaker moment. Um, but that's generally what you try to do. And you can knock that tower out halfway, possibly get it down, and then all you have to do is deal with one tower. So that's one way of playing while they're, they're all focused on the Baron. And that's what usually what you try to do is try to get your team to do the Baron during that time. And if nothing happens, Baron's over with whatever, um, and the next play is going to be Dragon. So you're going to end up going back to top lane and putting pressure and knocking out this. Um, and that way you have two lanes that you can abuse. Right now we actually have three lanes that we can easily abuse right now. Okay. Um, but we get our hands on the hole breaker at this point because of the jacked super minions um, that we currently got. So that's pretty much the general rule of the shine breaker uh, split push. Uh, strategy. So let's say we have Hallbreaker now. Okay. Um, the reason why Hallbreaker is so good on Volibear is you see that minion, that that Jack Super? Look at the buff being applied to it. That's the Hallbreaker. So when you get your hands on Baron, you're applying a double buff. So when your team, like say now you're pushing bot and your team's fighting at the Baron, they get the Baron you get that extra uh, buff. Um, but you could actually go to the Baron and, and and pick it up if you want that double buff. Uh, let's say, like right now, uh, Dragon's going to spawn. You all do the, the Baron before it. And that way it's going to give you enough time to go top and pressure with the Baron. And force one or two back to, and probably the whole team to defend. Because they have no choice to give up that Dragon or else you're going to just end the game. So I just want to show you guys the Shine Breaker moment. So generally, this is what you want to do when you pressure. You want to shove this up. And you just run. E, alt, bow right in the middle. And you focus on the second tower here while the minions focus on this. Just like that. And that's it. That's all you got to do. That's your job right there. That's it. You can just recall and let the minions finish. I always let the minions finish. 
So that's pretty much the core of the Shine Breaker. At this point, I can go Nashes, get more attack speed. What this is going to allow me to do is, let's say, um, let's say that they they stop me from ending the game. Okay, so now we have to, we have to back door here. We have to you know try to end, and all this attack speed is going to allow you to. So um, that's another thing that I want to talk about is if you get Nashers before you alt the Nexus towers, you can you can easily end the game right there. That's why um, going Nashers second, or actually Nashers first is what I mean. So either Nashers or Titanic first. So if you go Nashers first, you have guaranteed um, attack speed to, to end this game fast. But the power spike is Titanic on those towers. So this combination, Nashers, Titanic, is deadly. So for example, if I, if I backdoor or whatever, I can easily end the game. See all this attack speed? I can just walk around like this, boom, boom, and there it is. One Q. So that's the basics of uh, how I tend to play um, that my playstyle every game. All right, well, we're gonna take a look at um, an example of one of my games. So you can see we got a full build. I got 12 kills, one death. Um, it's kind of high, highly unlikely that I have a beautiful KDA like this because KDA is irrelevant when it comes to playing this play style. But when the volley bear is forced to defend a lane, for example, if the inhibitor is taken, the volley bear is forced to push that lane and he ends up, he starts farming champions. The thing about that what separates volley bear from the rest of the tower breaking champions like Scion, Scion is gonna die through the roof to destroy every tower. Volibear doesn't need to do that. Volibear, he, he farms champions, towers, and uh, objectives. Volibear is the most well-rounded tower breaker in the game. He's way better in Scion, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, his, his CS is, is really up there, especially when you're farming the side lanes. In most of my games, I, I always have almost like 300 CS, maybe beyond that. Um, but the most important thing when we look at the graphs isn't how much damage you're dealing to your champions. You already deal enough damage. What this means is um, how many how many times you're hitting champions in the game. That's what this really means. Okay? So this is irrelevant. It's, it's nice to see. It's nice to, you know have 12 kills but keep in mind this is not the most important thing you should be focusing on and that's why with my shine breaker play style you got to follow it to a key you got to follow the the macro and the split push rules that i have set up um, as long as you understand how to how to play around objectives you're going to get those towers and put pressure on the map that's way more important than getting uh kills but if champions get in your way that's what the volleyball is all about. He's a juggernaut, a diver. He's gonna destroy anything in his path. So if you if you get a beautiful KDA, then great. But overall, your your mission is to take down towers and get objectives, or make it easier for your team to get them while everybody's focused on you. So this is the mo number one most important thing right here: tower damage in every single one of your games. Your tower damage needs to be beyond everyone else. And then objectives is uh, usually secondary from like taking the rifts, for example. And sometimes you may help with the dragon, but most of the time it's always about the void creatures. The rifts and the baron. That's all Volibear needs to break a game. And there you have it. Here's an example of the Stormbreaker runes. That I'm running here, and as far as my build, I went static shiv. And let me tell you something: it it works really well in combination with his uh, passive lightning chain with Nashers and uh, all this AD with Titanic. 
you got a really powerful Q and you can zap them on the on the first uh, Q when you run up to a target. It's a lot of fun to play. But last item, anything after your core items like Iceborne, well, Titanic, Nashers, whatever you run first, into Mythic, Holebreaker, that's your core setup, right? And eventually you get Nashers anyway, or Titanic anyway, depending on which playstyle you choose from a mobile fire, uh, guys. Um, but last item usually doesn't matter. You can choose whatever, situationally, or, you know, for fun, or, uh, or whatever you may need and want to play with. Um, but that's it. You usually need your core, item, core items to break a game. That's usually what you need. Um, so these are the runes. You can see the stats on every single one of these are pretty high. Gathering Storm. Um, by the way, when you have Nashers, I have actually more AD than I do um, AP here because of Static Shiv. But it doesn't matter since it's adaptive. But normally I would go for like Dead Man's, Frozen Heart, uh, Warmog, Stirak. Not mm, Stirak would be the same scenario. But anything that's not AD, uh, the thing that I should tell you is Nashers pretty much overrides uh, Gathering Storm and scales AP. So even though you have um, Titanic, Iceborne, to the Hallbreaker, you're still going to have AP scalings. So that's kind of nice. So like when you get the Baron Nasher, for example, you have that buff, you get increased AD AP off the Baron. So that's one of the reasons why I run Gathering Storm, to make Volibear even more powerful when he's traveling up to the Nexus. And the later the game gets, the more Barons you get, you're just going to be incredibly power powerful. And no matter what, always be able to keep that pressure uh, on that lane and end the game. So I hope you guys learned a thing or two. Uh, be sure to like this guide. I worked very hard on it. Um, I hope this helps you guys understand the split push uh, macro of the Shinebreaker playstyle. So give it a shot. Check out my guide. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.